Hey, welcome back, guys, and happy Thanksgiving. It's Roby One, and today I'm thankful because I get to talk about Star Wars. So the reason I get to talk about Star Wars is that yesterday there was a small little blurb about um, EA working on an open-world Star Wars game coming up soon. Uh, I thought this was pretty big news overall for me as a huge Star Wars fan amongst being a pretty huge gamer, which honestly most gamers are because we're all that nerdy and awesome, so good for us. Um, and I, it just kind of got me thinking in the gears turning about what that could actually mean and what that could be and honestly what I would want out of that kind of Star Wars game. Um, we, of course, know that uh, EA took over the licensing rights for Star Wars games after Disney mistakenly and unfortunately shut down uh, LucasArts not too long after acquiring the company, after George Lucas sold it to them. Um, very unfortunately, as I've been very vocal about how uh, that was probably the worst thing that he could have done when retiring. Um, I'm glad he retired. He deserved it. Thank you for Star Wars. Why the hell did you sell LucasArts to Disney? Should have just left, left it in the creative control of Kathleen Kennedy. She's a great woman and a very smart person. Um, she knows the fundamentals and ideals of George Lucas and what the Star Wars brand and, of course, the other things that LucasArts works on should be. So I thought that um, selling it to Disney was a really, really stupid mistake, even though I like Disney otherwise. Um, anyway, I'm tangenting into, of course, more movie territory than anything. So the point is, um, eventually, EA ended up picking up the rights to, to make Star Wars games. I actually thought this was a great move. I never had a problem with this. It was, especially in the sea of miserable announcements and things happening due to Disney being in control, um, I thought that this was one of the best things that could have happened. On the gaming front, I don't subscribe to the belief that most people seem to and in that I don't hate EA. I think EA is a fine company. They've mostly only made really good games, smart decisions, um, really good business decisions. Although I am a sports and most especially a football fan, I don't really care about the sports games that they make. But I get that they're important for the business and for a lot of gamers and they make the biggest ones out there. So that's fine. Good for them. But in general, most of the stuff that they do, I really like it. They also um, now own Bioware and I love Bioware. Who doesn't? So that's another reason for me to be in the EA bandwagon. Um, and now, of course, they can make Star Wars games. So hooray. Good on them. They're, they're a company with enough money that I know that they can make good Star Wars games long term down the road. So so that's exciting. And I only have I only have mostly faith in them. Of course, I worry, but I mostly have faith. We already know that they're working on Battlefront 3 for all the next gen systems. That is amazing news. That was just the greatest thing to come out of um, E3 last year. I was so happy to see Battlefront coming back. So I know that that's going to be great, especially with DICE and stuff working on it. As long as it doesn't feel more Battlefield and feels more Battlefront. Um, don't don't make that mistake, guys. I swear to God, I'll kick your ass. Um, so as far as this new open world game, um, the news, anyone who would have seen it or read up on it knows it seems like the news is pretty sparse, honestly. It's mostly just um, a, a job listing. And honestly, I usually hate these job listing news news articles. I think that it's silly when someone says, oh, we need a we need a graphic designer and a skin texture for the boot of Kratos. And so all of a sudden, you know, or just because it's Santa Monica Studios and then everyone turns it into Kratos and then it becomes this whole big rumor about stuff. And I mean, don't get me wrong, because it's not like it's not a reliable source for news, because I get that a lot of times the things that come out of job listings tend to be true. But they're always like hinting at this like next gen thing or this new game or this new entry in a series of games and yada yada. And it's just it's just the stupidest news where it's like, oh, you know, five new Xbox is coming next year because of a silly job listing about something somebody who needs HD graphics programmers. I don't know. You know what I'm getting at. It's just really silly. But um, anyway, the, ultimately, the point is it's really just a job listing for somebody. Where is it? Um, an experienced animation director to help define and deliver uh, on the vision for a new major next gen open world action game, you know, Star Wars game, quote unquote. So <clears throat> that's what it is. That's where the news is coming from. Anyway, not a lot of concrete information to go on, but like I said, what I wanted to do is just kind of riff about my thoughts about what that could be and my dreams of what I would want from a game like that. Um, I am an open world fan. Honestly, I prefer games that kind of put you in this huge world setting and let you just sort of explore the world, the ambience of the world. I'm huge on that. I don't necessarily want a bombastic score always blaring at me when it comes to, to walking around worlds. I kind of like it when the sounds of the environments are really what sell, sell me on that. And usually in really good open world games like Skyrim and Grand Theft Auto, you get that. Granted, I'm not a Grand Theft Auto fan, but that's not because they're not good games. They're very good games. They just, they just don't speak to me because they're just people in cities and that's not really exciting to me. But stuff like Skyrim and Fallout and Zelda and things like that, 
the things of that nature. Um, those are my kinds of open world games. Love that stuff. So, and the Star Wars universe, it is rife for a game like this. I, I just, I can't believe it's taken this long for people to think of it. Um, the closest I think we've gotten to actually is one of my favorite Star Wars games of the last several years, and that was Star Wars Bounty Hunter for the GameCube. Um, I think the, and there was a PS2 version as well. Um, where you're playing as Jango Fett, my man, I'm a Mandalorian guy, I've got a Mandalorian tattoo on my arm, I'm wearing a Mandalorian shirt right now by coincidence, so um, I've always loved Boba Fett and Jango Fett and the entire Mandalorian history, so a lot of the stuff that happened on the last few seasons of the Clone War show was really cool because they delved into that, um, the old Clone War show I should say, there's a new one coming up. But um, or it's called Star Wars Rebels. Anyway, um, so that game was great because you got to spend some time. It wasn't very open world, but there were little hints and peaks of it, uh, uh, peaks at it. And what was really cool is you spent a lot of that time on Coruscant. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. I want to be able to spend so much time walking around and experiencing experiencing Coruscant. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what about Knights of the Old Republic? And especially what about the Old Republic, the MMO? Now, Knights of the Old Republic is the best Star Wars game ever made. Knights of the Old Republic 2 is not as good, but it was pretty darn good. I still liked it a lot. The Old Republic is good. It's actually really good for an MMO. It's the only MMO I've played. I've played a little bit of WoW, but I'm not even going to count that. So it's really the only MMO that I've played that I've bought and that I've tried to spend time on. And man, I just can't get into those kinds of games. So sadly, that experience of being in that Star Wars universe and, you know, walking around Coruscant that way, it was certainly great that they did it. And I know a lot of people love that stuff, but it didn't speak to me. So I'm looking for more of the Grand Theft Auto Skyrim type of experience only in Coruscant. That's what I want. Um, and that just... I think back to Attack of the Clones and when Anakin chases Zam Wessel through the streets and stuff and they go into that bar with Obi-Wan and oh my gosh, that I wanted to see more of that. I, I just want to see them run around Coruscant for the whole movie. I just think that that's, it's such a great um, place for the Star Wars universe and there's so much that could happen. Of course, you know, you would still maybe travel to different planets and different, sorry, different systems and different galaxies and uh, there's a lot of different environments that they could take advantage of in the Star Wars universe for making a game like this. So I'd like most or even all of it to be in Coruscant. That's fine too. But of course, wherever we go in the Star Wars universe, I think that there are really, really great things that could happen. Of course, the other question I have is really what kind of story we'd be looking at if they make this kind of game. So this is what this is a lot of what I'm curious about moving forward with Star Wars games, especially now that we know we're actually getting them, um, courtesy of EA. Uh, there's so many different periods of the universe that they could start to take from and expand upon. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of good with the Old Republic stuff. It's a fantastic piece of the lore. It's some of the best, but we've, we've had enough, and that's not really what interests me. Um, I mean, it's interesting to me, but it's not what interests me going forward in games, at least immediately. I'd like to get back into some of the more canon film stuff, especially with the new trilogy coming out in the next few years. Um, I'd like to be honestly exploring more of the events that happen around the Battle of Yavin and the, the Skywalker legacy that is the story from the films. Um, it would also be cool to step into some new Jedi Order stuff. You know, I don't necessarily want them to straight up borrow from um, the novels and that canon. You know, um, I mean, everyone wants to see the Thrawn trilogy done in so many different ways. And Thrawn is great, man. That is just one of the best things ever. But I kind of feel like that did its own thing for those novels. And I, I feel like that's good. I mean, you could bring in elements from those stories. Um, obviously, Mara Jade would need to be present. So if we brought Mara Jade into some of the in some of the game universes and stuff, that's that's fantastic. Because what a great character she is. But of course, then we're then we have to be dealing with Luke, and I am okay with that. But I, I mean, don't be afraid. Okay, I got, I got to pick my words carefully because I wanted to say, don't be afraid to explore some more of the of the stuff that happens during the film saga, which is you know a 50, 60 year gap between the six films that already exist. And yes, they did the um, Force Unleashed games. Let me talk about those for a minute. Um, what a colossal disappointment those two games were and that that thread line of the Star Wars universe that basically turned into some form of canon for the universe. Um, the idea was sound, so don't get me wrong. I was actually very hyped at first. I thought it was going to be a great, great concept and a great story. Um, I like Sam Witwer, the actor who played Starkiller, but I ended up totally disliking the character of Starkiller. I didn't like I, the, the the events that happened in those games that are supposed to be filling the gap between four, uh, 3 and 4, Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, where... 
you know, Darth Vader is hunting down the Jedi after um, after killing or not killing Obi Wan. What am I talking about? After um, being defeated by Obi Wan, and then of course becoming Darth Vader, and then becoming the uh, apprentice to Sidious, and Sidious is now the Emperor because he turned the Republic into the Empire. I mean, now all of a sudden. Darth Vader was tasked to hunt down the Jedi as we had learned in A New Hope. And what was what did that mean? And he, of course, hired this apprentice to do his, a lot of his work for him and blah, blah, blah. I mean, God, that's such a great idea. How did they fuck that up? Like those games, they're they're not even they're not terrible games. They're just painfully mediocre. And even worse than the games themselves, it is the story. They just didn't deliver on that character. I thought using the name Star Killer, which is a throwback to Luke Skywalker's original name from George Lucas' script before A New Hope was ever even filmed. I thought that was the stupidest idea. I thought that they took something that was just a, a really fantastic nugget of information, kind of a fact, uh, uh, like a fan service fact, when you go back into the history of what created the amazing Star Wars saga that, is, that it is today. And they, they took that and tried to, they spun it to make it some sort of canon idea um, as, like a, as like a shout out or to kind, of, to kind of get people excited. I just think it was kind of, defacing the purity of the fact that that was something that goes back to before the films came out and I think I just I feel like it was sacred I feel like the the name and the word of Starkiller when relating to Star Wars was sacred that's George Lucas's thing from before the movies came out it turned into something else name Starkiller something else think of something creative Star Killer, it's not even like John Starkiller it's Starkiller that's the stupidest fucking thing ever I was so unhappy with that it is so rare you ever hear me rant, and especially on something Star Wars related, but I'm so passionate about Star Wars that I, I have to lay this stuff out. Of course, I thought this was going to be a short episode, a short video, but here we are, you know, 11 minutes in already, so whatever, I'm just going to keep on going on this Thanksgiving day. Um, but the, the the story and the use of that character and the few characters that were introduced and the way those games ended, ugh, they were just, they were just so bad. So the point I'm trying to get at is, I don't, I don't really count those games, um, so I want something better that exists within the realm of the Star Wars, the film universe for games. It doesn't have to be that way, and I don't remember, I know 1313 was going to be focused on either Boba Fett or just Mandalorians or, and bounty hunting in general, I don't know. Um, another colossal screw-up that that game got canceled and isn't now still being worked on again, like what the hell were they thinking? Maybe... In some crazy shocking twist, we'll find out that this new game actually is a resurrected 1313. And that would be great because that game looked phenomenal and I was excited for it. I think that that was going to be set within the, the film saga timeline, the Battle of Yavin stuff. So if that is true, then hell yes, that would be great. Um, but, you know, or like I said, New Jedi Order stuff. I just don't want them to go back to the old tried and true Old Republic stuff because we've been, we've been doing that for 10 years now, literally. 2003 was when the Knights of the Old Republic came out. That's good. That's great. We've explored it since then. Let's let's go. Let's get away from that. Please don't rest on, don't use that as the crutch to rely on game developers when it comes to the Star Wars stuff. There's way more to Star Wars than just that. And honestly, as much as I love the Old Republic, that is not the best parts of the Star Wars universe. So it's time to get a little bit more creative. You know, you don't have George Lucas to rely on anymore, helping you know what to do. Uh, so make the right decisions. You know, we're all Star Wars fans. You guys making these games are Star Wars fans. I believe that you can use your passion and your knowledge of the lore to make a really good game so when it comes to an open world kind of game i just hope that it um <clears throat> i hope it does the right thing i certainly wouldn't mind a grand theft auto feel to it like i said before mostly because even though i don't like the games that exist that are grand theft auto you know the fundamentals the engine the mechanics the ideas the stories those are all good they're very sound and i would love to see that kind of experience happen in a star wars universe you know what characters i'd want to play i don't really know or care make it good make it right and i'll just i'll play whatever it is that you give me um that you give us i should say and uh make this make the story a good story make the the action good you know it doesn't have to be super pretty but if pretty is nice you know i just want i want really excellent immersive star wars worlds to delve into especially coruscant give us some coruscant you want to make it like grand theft auto go to the one place in star wars that is actually like a city go to motherfucking coruscant because that is the place that we could do a lot of really cool things for star wars so um one more thing I figured I'd touch on real quick before I go, just because I don't usually like talking about just one thing on a video, um, is the fact that the Xbox One just came out. It is now Thanksgiving Thursday again, so um, not quite a week since the Xbox One launched last Friday. Well, technically even last Thursday night at midnight. 
Um, so it's been interesting. Apparently, Microsoft also they said they shipped. They said they sold worldwide a million Xboxes within 24 hours, which is really good. Um, good for them. Congratulations. Um, I know that by comparison, the PS4, which came out only a week prior, I think they sold a million just in the U.S. within 24 hours. So <clears throat> by volume, you definitely have to look at the PlayStation 4 as being a little bit more successful, but. I mean, that's not really a surprise to anybody. There was a lot more buzz and hype going into the PlayStation 4. I think it. I also think it was the more complete, ready-to-ship system. So the, the thing about the Xbox that's really interesting is apparently it's been having a lot more issues than the PS4s have since launching. The PS4s did have some issues. I'm sure a lot of people know there were problems with video stuff, HDMI ports, um, I think freezing, this, the white light on the controller coming on and messing things up, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... But I know that that's been uh, that was an issue for them. However, the Xboxes have been running into major UI issues and freezing and bricking and uh, and some stuff. You know, um, I know problems with uh, the interface switching between games and apps because it uses the Connect Voice Command stuff to go on the fly, and a lot of that stuff is still not completely smooth. Um, stuff that's really unfortunate, and it's happening at a larger rate than it is with the PlayStation 4. Um, but it's also, from what I hear, the kind of things that that is mostly software fixes and software patches they can probably fix down the road in the coming months. Um, not not so much hardware stuff, whereas like with the PS4, for example, one of the big problems was the HDMI port on the back kind of getting uh, bent or dislodged to the point where you couldn't even really plug in your HDMI. Henceforth, you couldn't even hook it up to your TV. So uh, I guess all you could do at that point is stream it to your Vita. And uh, that's not really – that's not a good thing. That's a much harder thing to fix and much harder damage control on Sony's part. But – Still, that's a less common problem than a lot of the stuff happening with the Xboxes. But again, I don't know. I just want to I want to um, dissuade a lot of people's fears about the Xbox One um, if you're having those problems. Because, like I said, I think that's mostly software stuff. Patches will be coming. They're going to fix that. Um, but I do think it also speaks to the fact that the Xbox was probably a little bit more rushed than the PlayStation 4 by comparison. Um, honestly, rushed overall. Makes me kind of yearn for the days where there was no such thing as patches and they could only ship a system if it was 100% good to go. They can't just patch it later. It's like it's got to be working for as long as this person is going to have it. Once it goes out the door, once it goes out our door into the warehouses, into the stores, into people's homes, it's got to be good. And that's what they used to do. And nowadays they can kind of sort of half-ass and just push a half finished piece of shit out the door and just get into your home and like, Oh, we'll fix it later. Just hook it up to the internet. And then, you know, it's, it's a double edged sword and that that's kind of a great advantage. And that's also a disadvantage. So it's, it's whatever, but that aside, it's pretty exciting and cool that the Xbox one is out. Both, both new systems are out and now all three are out by the way, by comparison, almost no problems with the Wii U. So as per usual, good on you, Nintendo, because you make the most consistently reliable and solid hardware out there. Um, you, your stuff almost never has issues. Um, you could probably drop a nuclear bomb on a GameCube and that thing would still work. Um, uh, as evidenced by the landmine destroyed Game Boy that's still running in the Nintendo store, the Nintendo World store in New York. So um, that's that's great stuff. PlayStation had some issues. Xbox had some issues. But whatever. Eventually, it's all going to get hammered out. We will not have another Red Ring of Death scenario this generation. I can promise you guys that. They know how to prevent that. Um, so it's great that the Xbox One is out. It actually, like I talked about on a previous video, as much as the PlayStation 4 is the more exciting unit, there's definitely more exciting um, launch games for the Xbox One and the launch window games. So kudos to them, man. Dead Rising 3 and Killer Instinct and Titanfall coming next year. Like there's, there's, uh, there's another one I'm forgetting that I know looked good and I can't remember. Um, Fours is a really big deal. It's not my thing, but I know it's a very big deal and it's apparently pretty good. It's quite good. It's got some good reviews. So, um, that's, that's really cool, you know? So I guess I'm just kind of giving a shout out to the Xbox one, just like I did for the PlayStation four. I'm glad it came out. Glad it's doing pretty well. Excited to have the next generation now finally 100% in full swing. Um, and there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out over the next several months. Um, Titanfall, like I said, Donkey Kong Country returns, Tropical Freeze, Infamous Second Son, um, that's a game for all three systems. Actually, that's pretty cool. So, and, and I think, uh, I think Bayonetta two will be some early in some time early in 2014. Um, so, and then more stuff for the other systems. So lots of stuff coming out. Um, kudos on the Xbox. If you guys have it and you're enjoying it, um, you should talk about it. Let me know. So, uh, I hope everyone's digging their Xbox. I hope everyone is excited for star Wars and I really hope everyone is having a fantastic Thanksgiving and eating a bunch of good food, drinking a bunch of beer, watching a bunch of football and having, um, fun times with their family and friends. So happy Thanksgiving one more time. Keep on gaming and, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time.